Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode of The Gee Dunk. We just saw Army of the Dead. Yes we did, and we're about to tell you about it. All right, Army of the Dead. Billy, what do you think? Hey man, I thought it was a pretty good movie. You know, it's just stars Dave Bautista... Who is, you know, going to become a real big name in the WWE, ad- former wrestler, oh yeah. Absolutely. Following the footsteps of The Rock, moving to the big screen, doing good things. Guardians of the Galaxy, you know what I mean? You gotta, awesome as Drax. You gotta love the guy, he's awesome as Drax, absolutely. You know, and then you got Theo Rossi from Sons of Anarchy. You know, he did a good job in that show. And then, of course, you got Hiroyuki Sonata, who played, what, Scorpion in the latest Mortal Kombat movie. Mm. You know, he played in Last Samurai. And that guy's been in a ton of stuff. So it's a pretty good cast they got in this movie. Yeah, it also has that woman from Instant Family, which is kind of, this is kind of like an odd role for her. I know she's a comedian, but she plays a helicopter pilot in this, and she, she did a pretty good job. Yeah, she did, she did. She I did thought her character job. was really well done, so. No, absolutely. So what do you think how this movie starts off? So I'd say it starts off uh, pretty well. I mean, you know, it starts off kind of how you'd expect any kind of, zombie movie or something like that to start off right it starts off as this military experiment kind of thing going on and you know they're driving down the road get a big tr- you know truck wreck and boom the zombies loose and the next you know all hell there's only loose. two cars on the road they're like magnets i mean i don't know exactly. what it is exactly. but uh i tell you what it starts off like in a military situation and you know we're former uh marines here and i just can't help like that beginning scene kind of bothered me it shows like Air Force security forces. For one, these guys look way too old to be airmen at their rank. They look like they're 30 something. The average age is probably like 20 something. But, anyways, crap happens. Um, these guys are like firing on fully automatic. That always drives me crazy because the military very rarely, especially these guys, would not be firing on fully automatic. No, they definitely. So, this gets like that part of me going and I start being overcritical. But I tell you what, after that scene, when the actual credits start going, it, it kind of gets a little loose, and then I was able to get a little loose and enjoy it a lot more. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And then, of course, you know, when it when it rolls into, you know, the city kind of being locked down and taken over, and it becomes this kind of zombie apocalypse city where the zombies own the town and are running Las Vegas, uh, you know, that's, that's when you really start getting... I really love that this took place in Las Vegas. You got the music, and I love the opening credits where the guy's like on the 50 cal, and he's just like mowing people down, and it's like disintegrates that guy. You got the A-10s oh, yeah. coming in here, and that's pretty yeah, bad. He blows that zombie to pieces. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, so I really enjoyed that aspect. No, absolutely. This is kind of like a heist movie. Like, shortly after that, it kind of shows you what happened. It's a military experiment gone wrong. So um, they're bringing in the military. They're bringing in police, and these zombies are just like taking over Las Vegas. Right, and then um, they have like a diner scene where this guy says, "Hey, I got like a lot of money. I just need you to go get it. What do you think?" To like Dave Batista's character. Right, exactly. And of course, Dave Batista's character says, "Absolutely. You know, I want five. You know, fifty, $50 million dollars." Right, exactly. Which so, is weird because like he was like, w- "What was he doing before this?" He was he was flipping hamburgers like, at, a, at a little burger joint. <laughs> well, he was doing something like protection security. Yeah, see, he, he was got, like, like they, a medal. Yeah, they, they showed you he was like basically a special forces guy, right? And he ends up getting the uh, this you know Secretary of Defense out of Las Vegas during the whole crisis when it was happening, and he gets some you know he gets a medal for it. And then the next thing you know, he's flipping burgers. Which is kind of odd because they don't really explain like. How are you the successful, like, special forces or, or hot shot guy, and now you're flipping burgers? Yeah, no, they, they, they never explain that. It just doesn't make any yeah, sense Yeah, it doesn't say, either. like, he got fired for doing something wrong or something like that. Um, it, yeah. It's just kind of weird. No, they, never they explains how it's, that. Yeah, no, exactly. Which never is, explains how it's career ended. Which is kind of weird because this is, like, a rather long movie, and then they skip some things, and then they concentrate too long on some other aspects. Right, you know, and, and another aspect of the movie that was kind of iffy was... They make it seem like maybe, maybe I'd say maybe, what, one or two years has passed top since Vegas has been taken over by zombies. It seems like only a couple yeah, years did, have I passed. Don't, I don't know if they give a time frame or nah, anything. but it doesn't seem like it's been a very long time. And yet, Bautista and his daughter in the movie have daddy-daughter issues that supposedly, according to her, didn't start until after the zombie event happened, which was, like I said, it was only about a year or two ago, so... Why she hates her dad now. Yeah, and she after, looks like she's like her mid-20s or something. Oh, yeah. Kind of yeah, odd. yeah, absolutely. And she looked that way in the earlier scenes of the movie, you know, when the zombie apocalypse started there. So, you know, it didn't really make any sense of why all of a sudden she's got these huge daddy issues, you know, when she's in her 20s. And because, you know, dad, you didn't make me feel good about myself after the zombies <laughs> attack Las Vegas, you know, so. 
So then it becomes kind of a heist movie. This guy starts assembling the team. What did you think about those scenes as he's like gathering his crew? I thought that was good. I mean, you know, they were just quick, you know, to the point scenes. It just kind they of, uh, you, know, you know, just a couple minutes apiece, just running around gathering his crew. Of course, uh, you know, they've got 50 million to split between the team and, uh, you know, they're shortchanging most <laughs> of the team members, right? He's spitting, you know, he's spitting, you know, 15 million between him and two others. You know, as each of them are getting 15 million, he's got 5 million to split between the rest. He's like, hey, man, you want to crack a safe for 250000 in a zombie-infested Las Vegas? And the guy's like, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> you better offer me a hell of a lot more than $250,000 to go on to Las Vegas. And, and I would say this movie has kind of like a video gamey feel. Like, this almost seems like Batista's Marcus Phoenix and the other guys, like Coltrane. Like, they, they really oh, feel yeah. like Gears of War type of characters. Right. Well, and, and, even, and even the zombies kind of give you that feel, right? Like, the lead zombie seems like he's one of the lead generals in the, in the horde. You know, the locust horde from Gears of War and all these other zombies are, you know, you got some smart zombies in here and they're kind of following the lead of him and his queen. And then you got, of course, all the stupid zombies that are just your typical zombie movie zombies. But, you know, but you got a lot of smart zombies in this who are really quick and could dodge bullets and, and all this crazy stuff. So, yeah, it's very, very much got a Gears of War feel to it. And I got to tell you, I really like what they did with the zombies here. I thought, like, the little queen zombie lady looked amazing. Absolutely. They looked really good. I really liked the dynamic of having, like, the smart zombies who are, like, the leader of these kind of packs and stuff like that. I was really digging that. No, I was digging that, too. Uh, the one thing, uh, you know, it was kind of weird that they never explained about it, though, was so they would shoot certain zombies, and their heads, when they were shooting them in the head, would kind of turn, like, that bluish stuff. It almost looked like they were cyborgs or something, right? It was like blue sparks would come out of their heads, and they would shoot them. They never really explained what that's all about. Uh, they just, I guess they kind of just lead you to believe that those are, you know, some of the smart zombies. They were turned by the head zombie himself, and there's something about them that, you know, that, that, that makes them that way. But it really didn't explain why, you know, certain zombies got shot had these, like, blue sparks coming out of their heads. Yeah, I don't know if that was part of like the secret sauce and how they originated or what in this military experiment or what have you. There's a couple other like plot holes I thought in this movie because there's this alternate like plot going on where they're trying to get like some blood from the zombies and I'm like this originated as a military experience. Shouldn't you already have this blood and you and they make it seem like the military might have started this so like why do they need like additional blood to try and weaponize this? It seems right. kind of like weird right yeah they didn't yeah that, that. that definitely didn't make sense because you know just like you said you know why on earth would they not already have the stuff that they i mean they, they made the guy to the first zombie to begin with right so mm -hmm. obviously they had the material they needed to make the first zombie so why would they need to collect that stuff all over again you know you you know they should still have material on hand to make another zombie they wanted to so that part definitely didn't make a lot of sense to me yeah another inconsistent see that bothered me like right off the bat like this zombie like bites someone and i mean within like three seconds this guy turns he got bit on the arm i believe and he turns in like three seconds and then you see that same zombie do something similar like in other parts of the movie and it probably takes like five minutes or a significant Even amount longer. of time to to change so that that seems a little odd to me yeah yeah you know like you said, uh, you know, so what, what Josh is talking about here is the lead zombie, right? If you get bitten by the lead zombie, you turn into one of his zombie generals, his smart zombies, and the change is quick. I mean, the first guy you see bitten literally, what, a couple seconds, you know, he's changed into a zombie, right? And then later in the movie, like you said, you know, he's biting, you know, a couple people and it's taking them forever. And it's like, well, how did this one guy change in a couple seconds? And these guys are, you know what, it's because they're big and muscular. It takes longer for, you know, the zombie venom to get to their muscles or what? You know, I mean, you know, they, I mean, they don't do a very good job of explaining it. They don't, they don't do a job at all of explaining that. There's no explanation whatsoever why it takes these guys a lot longer to turn than they did the, you know, did the first couple guys. Yeah, so they move on to the part where they're kind of entering Las Vegas, which is like zombie infested area. And, and the movie really like picks up for me at that point. I thought it was really cool. Like there's like zombie animals in this movie that are like really cool. They look really cool and have some cool parts to them. Yeah. What do you think about those? That things? was one of my favorite parts of the movie, the zombie tiger. Uh, I, I would watch this movie all over again just for that tiger. Especially, there's some good scenes of that tiger's in. It's like, man, that was outstanding. So that was that was absolutely really cool how they did that. They took uh, you know the whole uh, Siegfried and Roy tiger show and just kind of threw that aspect of it into this movie, you know, because it's Vegas, you know, and then they get you this zombie tiger roaming around. So that thing was awesome. Yeah, like I said, I really like the atmosphere. Uh, the music's pretty good throughout and stuff like that. And this is like one of those movies you just sit back, have some popcorn, relax. Uh, try not to be overcritical, and you're going to have like a pretty good time because the action is pretty decent. I thought. Yeah, no, it was, it was a great action, and, and like I, said, I mean, this isn't a movie you know that you're going to take too seriously. You know, you're going to sit down and you're going to enjoy it and watch it, and and you know, and it's just one of the movies you can sit back and you don't even have to pay attention. This ain't a movie where you just got to sit there and pay attention all the time. You know, to stay involved. You know, you can take a break and whatever, and come back, and you're not really going to miss that much because, like I said, it's primarily an action-packed movie that you know just kind of flows along with the story. 
But uh, yeah, I definitely enjoyed that. Uh, it does suffer from the usual tropes, like magazines, like they're shooting like 20, 30 rounds before they're ever reloading and stuff like that. But, right, especially from a pistol um, magazine. Yeah. Um, Batista has like his weapon on automatic and he's just getting headshots all over the place at one point. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of unrealistic stuff in there for sure, you know, but that guy goes with the territory with zombie movies, right? I mean, yeah, and they set the tone pretty early that this is like a fun, lighthearted kind of movie. I mean, zombie movie, so you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. What do you I, think about this compared to like other zombie movies? So, you know, it was definitely a, a good twist, you know? I mean, you know, I mean, you got plenty of other zombie movies where there's fast zombies and, you know, quick zombies and all that, but you never... You never really see one where there's just like this lead zombie that's almost like the leader of the locust horde, like we were talking about, you know, in Gears of War kind of thing. So I like that aspect of it. You know, I, I like the fact that, you know, it, you know, that he was a militarized weapon and it's not like, the, you know, the army made a bunch of zombies. You know, they made him as their first experiment. You know, and he gets loose and, and just basically takes over Las Vegas. Right. So I, I like how they did that. I like how they made him somewhat intelligent. You know, and how he's able to make other intelligent zombies and, uh, you know, and kind of uh, build his zombie army, you know, as the name of the movie suggests. Yeah, and, and I will say this movie's kind of interesting the way it's filmed, too, because it, a lot of it takes place during the day, which is kind of interesting. So you can really, like, see the zombies pretty clear and stuff like that. Like I said, the queen zombie, she looks fantastic and stuff like that. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, no, the effects are great. The queen, the, the queen zombie looks awesome. I thought Zeus, the head zombie, looked great. I thought, uh, you know, all the zombie generals they did a great job with. I mean, I mean, even the lesser zombies, you know, a lot of them looked really good. Where a lot of times, you know, a lot, of, you know, a lot of shows, you know, you know, for the, you know, the second rate zombies and stuff, really don't won't do a good job with the makeup. You can be like, oh, that zombie kind of looks like garbage. But in this movie, for the most part, they all looked pretty good. I thought. What do you think about Zack Snyder and the way he filmed it, or just the way he directed it in general? Uh, I thought it was your typical Zack Snyder movie. You know, you know, you're going to have a lot of action in it. You know, you know, it's going to be a long movie. You know, you know, it's. Uh, you know, the story progression is, is going to be there and there's going to be some parts you may agree or disagree with, you know, just like in Justice League when, you know, the whole ending of Justice League, I wasn't a big fan of, you know, with, you know, Batman dropping the F-bomb at the end and all that, how they threw that in there. But I mean, for the most part, I think he did a good job with this movie. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It was kind of like grainy and like I noticed in particular, like he, he used a lot of like out of focus shots and then it would come in focus and he just like to me overused that technique like far too often like so many things out of focus in this or like the bokeh is just really strong and i'm like wow you're really you're really doing that like from scene to scene and and it was just like catching my eye and i noticed i don't know if you did yeah, no, I, yeah I, was I, I definitely to. noticed that as well so I, that maybe that's just his thing or something but that i found a little bit distracting and there were some scenes where i'm like i'd really like to kind of see more what's going on like like open the aperture a little more widen it up to see what's going on but he kept it pretty narrow a lot throughout this so it was yeah and, and you know and, and, he, and he kept it exciting you know there's there, like so there, you know there's a lot of action going on in this movie there's some good excitement uh there's a you know a couple of twists with uh, characters where you know people who you thought okay they're probably gonna make it uh, pretty far into the movie all of a sudden it's like whoa they just killed them off pretty crazy you know so that's true yeah. I, you know and i like how they did that actually mm -hmm. uh, i like how you know you totally didn't even see that coming and then bam they're dead and it's like okay all right you know i, I can get into that yeah i mean even though this was a fairly long movie it kept my attention throughout. Like, I do think it should have been shortened, um, but um, it kept me going the whole time. I was interested. So. Yeah, no, I agree. Absolutely. What about any other aspects of the plot? Did anything bother you? You thought anything else was good? The whole yeah. caper kind of aspect of no, it? No, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of cool how they threw the caper aspect into it, you know? A zombie movie slash we money heist. Like some Indiana Jones type of traps with the vaults. Right. That, yeah, that, like that, that was pretty funny. And the way and the way they played that thing out, we're not going to ruin it with any kind of, uh, you know, plot, uh, you know, giving anything away here. But uh, it was a pretty good funny scene on how they deal with the traps leading up to where the vault's at and how to get to the money and all that stuff. Right. So that, that was pretty cool how they did that, I thought. Uh, I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I thought the acting was good. You know, I thought, you know, even, you know, I mean, there, there was... A, for the most part, there's quite a few actors that you really probably won't recognize, but, uh, you know, I thought they did a pretty good job, you know? Yeah, I mean, this is, for lack of a better term, kind of like a guy movie, but there's a lot of, like, females in this that yeah. Oh, yeah. did pretty good Absolutely. and held their own, yeah. too, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. That was good. I, 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 good I, I like how they threw that aspect in there. They did a really good job with it. Yeah. What do you think about, like, how it wrapped up in the end? So, I thought it wrapped up uh, pretty well during what we thought was the ending, Right, and then they show you this kind of second part of it, and you're like, "Well, not quite sure about that," because uh, you know, without ruining anything, that goes along with the lines we were talking about earlier: how long it takes somebody to change into a zombie, right? Mm 
So I wasn't uh, wasn't a big fan about how they kind of played that aspect of it out. And I wish they'd have done something a little different with that. I mean, maybe not even had that in there, you know, but... I would have liked a little bit more of a surprise ending. And, like, what you think is the ending, the movie goes on for maybe, like, 15 more minutes, and it just seemed kind of, like, unnecessary. Exactly. <laughs> like, you think, some, oh, it's still going. Something pretty amazing is about to happen, and not really. No, no, not really. And and they could have just cut it when you when you think it ended. It would have been fine to cut it there, and it would have probably been better for it. Right, exactly. And, and I get it. I, you know, Obviously, I think the reason they did it here is because they're trying to line up for a potential next movie. But they didn't need to add that extra 15 minutes in to do that, right? They could have just had that into the beginning of the next movie if they needed to and started it that way. So there was really no need for that. They could have ended it at the spot where we thought they were going to end it at and where they kind of lead you to believe it ends before it picks back up. And they still could have, you know, started off from there into a second movie, you know, for during a second movie. So what would you rate this movie? I would rate it as uh, recommendable. I mean, I, I I think it would have been cool to see it in a theater, you know, just because of the fact that, uh, you know, there was a lot of action going on. I mean, the zombies look pretty cool. It would been cool to see them on the big screen. Uh, I mean, would I necessarily have raced to the theater to see it? No, no. I mean, I, I would have been fine waiting a couple weeks. It's not one of those movies where I just had to be like, oh, man, I got to see this opening day. I thought it was that good. But it, but it was but it was an interesting and it was an entertaining movie, I thought. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's not a highly recommend from me. It's just like a recommend. But for it being available on Netflix, it really kind of like hit the spot for me. I needed a movie like this right now because it did kind of have like a blockbuster movie theater like fun feel aspect to it. So, And I've been missing that kind of lately. So um, for it being on Netflix, I mean, that's pretty cool. And I'm glad they did that because I don't feel like cheated in any kind of way. It it really like uh, satisfied me. If I had paid money for it, I don't think I would have been too disappointed, but uh, I'm just not sure it rises to, to that level. So, um, yeah, definitely. It's, it's definitely a recommend. I had fun with it, but it definitely has its flaws. Yeah. I mean, if you've got Netflix, watch the movie. It's definitely worth watching. You're going to sit there and you're going to have a good time and you're going to enjoy it. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a, two, a waste of two hours at all. Yeah. If you're yeah. into action and zombies, you'll probably get some enjoyment at it at the very least. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, that's our review of Army of the Dead. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you at our next review. And stick around for next week when we review A Quiet Place 2.